In this assignment, we're going to go through some of the basic functions in Dreamweaver to create an old style table based website. Now, the real good question would be this is not the best way to do things. Why the heck am I teaching you to make a table based site? Well, I want you to recognize what they look like, and next week you're going to convert it into a CSS site because I do think it is important to recognize what a table based site looks like because there's a chance that you could, in your employment, future run into an older site that you have to redesign and make modern. So that's what the exercise is. We're going to do an old version this time. We're going to redesign it into the proper format next week. Before you ever start coding a web page, you should have all of your text done in something like Word where you can copy and paste it. I'm not going to make you guys watch me type extensive amounts. I think that's insanely boring. I actually have most of this that I took from my web scripting class where I have properly set it up for a good layout, but I'm going to do this as a new one. So I'm going to be, I'm in my file structure, my labs three. This is just a file copied in so that I had some thing to work with. And I'm going to put a new file and I'm going to name it index.html. Don't worry about the markup HTML. That was, again, is just my work there. And so I'm going to start with a blank page and we're going to go into design view, uh, view um, I do prefer HTML5. A better way to do this because of its defaults. I'm going to kill that and instead of doing it that way I'm not going to work this way. I'm going to choose File New Doc Type HTML5 and I'm just going to choose layout of none. I'm going to hit create and then I'm going to do file save as. Make sure you're saving frequently. And I'm going to put it in. Yes, I'm working on a Mac. Um, I'm going to put it in labs, lab three. And I'm going to name it index.html. I do want you working exclusively in HTML5. Even though I'm showing you the old way to do things, I, I just want you to get in the habit of working in the HTML5. It's the right way to do things now. Now historically, and you can go ahead and put a title on this, just call this table layout. And I want to show you some of the quick ways to set up a page in Dreamweaver. We're going to go ahead and use some of the page properties, which actually sets CSS for you. So I'm going to select page properties and we're going to look at the CSS appearance. Now for most web pages you want to use one of the sans serif font families. So pick any one you want that's sans serif. There's many in here. Um, the sans serif just ten, tends to look better. Size, uh, you can leave it to the default or I like to work with M's instead of pixels. It just bases it on the user's computer. You can pick any dark text color you want. I some, want something reasonably high contrast. Gener Generally, I like black. Background color. We're going to play with this. I'm going to make my background color black. We'll play with that. I'm not going to worry about margins. I can get into the HTML appearance. Um, not going to links. Eh, not really going to worry about that. Headings. Um, I'm just going to set the font size for a few of these. I want the Heading 1 to be 3M, heading 2, 2M, two, and that's as far as I'm going to go. And let's give them some colors. Um, blue and um, purple. Okay, now I don't like black backgrounds, but it's not going to stay this way. Typically, if I were doing the old style layout, I would go and insert a table and I would typically make it eh, 3 by 3 is good, table width 80%, border thickness, usually I leave it as 0, um, padding that's fine, and I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm leaving the uh, borders in now, but I'll delete them in a little bit after I show you how this sets up. Um, 
I want the whole table aligned. And one of the things that you can do here, now I'm using CSS, which back when they did table layout, uh, you wouldn't necessarily have done this. It did overlap for a while because table layout was really reliable. It would just really always work where CSS, when we were transitioning in the early 2000s, could be unpredictable. So I can actually add a new style and I'm going to choose table and hit OK. And I'm going to change the background color of my table. And I'm going to make that white. And that's really, this is really how I would have done a table layout. Now typically I would start sort of like this and often I would go in table and I would merge cells here and this would be, um, I'm going to choose H1 and I'm going to say this is name of my site. Um, I would put a logo or an image here. Let me bring up my files for a second here. Window, files. Now, I'm going to do something that I don't really encourage you to do. Generally, you should ha I should have moved these in before I started working. I'm not always that organized, but I set up my work before I started. I brought it, put in together a couple of images, which I'm going to drag into my folder. Oh, it doesn't let me do that on the Mac. Okay, it's cranky, so I'm going to open up Finder and go to where I have my files stored which should be in my web 175, which I believe I have in my, yep, maryMCCDGM.net. I obviously have a couple different things in here. And web 175 and labs. And lab three. Okay, so I'm gonna. I've taken these. I took the time to go and find photos, and you'll see lots of photos of my dogs. Not because I particularly want to show you my dogs, but because I don't particularly care if you see my dogs. I don't tend to put up kid photos or anything like that. Dog photos and Seamus, my stuffed sheep. Um, but I want you using all original photos. I use my dogs because they're not copywritten to anybody but me. I own them. So if I Refresh this here. Eli and Nessie are now in here. Now I'm going to end up putting in content in a few different ways here. Um, I'm going to do something that I sort of frown upon, but in this particular case I'm going to do it anyway, and I'm going to explain why I frown upon it and why I'm going to do it anyway. So this is Bouvier de Flanders. It's a breed of dog I have. And this is Eli. And this alt text would be shown if you couldn't see the image. Now this image is actually larger than I'd like a logo to be. Or so, but I'm going to resize here. Yes, that works. Don't do it in general because the larger image loads. It won't matter here. And the reason it's not going to matter here is because I'm going to have a larger version of this anyway. So you'd have had to load the image anyway. So it doesn't really matter. So here on this side, I'm going to put links. And here I'm going to put text and images. And so this is just showing you how I would do layout. Now it's a really good idea to have your text written. And then you can just copy and paste it from Word. And don't 
completely love that font, but it'll do. I'm not going to worry about it right now. And then I might drag in an image here. Let's see, we'll put Nessie right there. Nessie. Okay, female. Okay, so I have Nessie. I have, this is Movie Age Flanders. Don't really need that. This is the appearance section. And it's way, way easier to, again, do this. Now, it's sort of centering this, and I don't really want that. So I'm going to get my information in here, and then I'm going to edit. I think I'm going to put Eli here. Now, there's some issues with the table structuring that I'm going to see here. So to get this the way I want, I can split my cell. This is where you get a lot of control. And I want to split columns. And so really, I want Eli centered here in the middle. And I want to grab text here. And text here. And so you can see, and this I actually want to be We'll just sort of play with it, put it where I want it. I might want to, in my table, possibly add another row, or maybe put this insert row. That one put one above. That's okay. I'll just move these up. And again, I left the borders of the table in here so you could see where they go. But since you can merge cells, so I can put this here in the bottom. And then here, I would typically merge these. And typically this is how I'd do my layout and then I would have links. Okay. I actually can change spacing here. And this is decent but not perfect layout. So now I'm going to start doing some basic formatting. And this is really taking me back in time. So basic formatting. Um, it shows you how the layout is working. And there's lots of different ways I could lay this out. But let's play with this. Okay, so in this table, I would typically typically go up here, and you've got choices in HTML in each of these cells where I can center, and I can have vertical alignment. This one I actually want in the middle. Generally, text alignment, I'm going to want vertical alignment to top which appears to be what's going on there. I usually want my images. Again, this is a cell alignment. I'm going to set my vertical alignment to middle and my horizontal to center. 
I want the horizontal left, vertical, oops, not middle, vertical, top, vertical, top. It's pretty much set where I want it. Um, could play with that cell and middle align and center and here let's vertical align top make sure I don't have any and if it doesn't look the way you'd expect you can always go look at the code oh and for the links definitely want the links to be vertically aligned to the top now that's a pretty decent not phenomenal but okay layout and it would look better if I go back into my table and set my padding higher and you can see that gets these a little away from the lines I actually want that higher yet um, again select table padding 8 there and that padding is giving the spacing between those and the edge and border of zero that just became invisible so now I'm going to preview in Firefox and that shows you that I can do some interesting and fairly decent layout just with table structure and while that works okay it makes for very complicated layout not too bad here but you can nest a table inside the cell of another table and that gets really complex so let's show you a couple more things in Dreamweaver I would also put in named anchors so here I'm going to insert named anchor and I'm just gonna call it first and I'm gonna do that for each of my headings here insert named anchor history that's okay except I did not want to lose that so let's put it right next to it insert named anchor history oh and that should have not gotten rid of my first VA insert temperament insert now you can see those named anchors are way easier when you're just putting them in now I can link to each of these multiple ways if I put in the hash mark and appearance that'll work If I was linking to an outside page, I'd be able to drag. I'm not sure if this is going to let me drag to the anchor. Let's see. Oh, it does. That's nice. So I can just highlight and drag to the image of the anchor, and it's going to drop it right in place. I kind of like that. Usually you're pointing to an actual page, but that's pretty, pretty slick. That works pretty well. Okay, so that's really simple page layout. And again, I can preview this in various browsers. And you'll see that even though it's not the recommended layout, browsers will honor it. And you should test in a different browser each time. I just get in that habit. You want to make sure it's going to look good in everything. So appearance, this really isn't going to move it much. That takes you there. Temperament does. History, eh, not a big change. My first Bouvier, well, you can already see that. If I was here, it would link it and move it on the page. So again, very basic 
table-based layout. You're going to do a similar one on a topic of your choice. Um, do a simple table-based layout. Next week we're going to redo that as a proper layout using HTML5 and we'll use some of the templates that they have in Dreamweaver. But for right now this shows you what it, how it used to be done.